say that because I'm the oldest one here. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. <laughs> And I will remember that. <laughs> Amen. Okay. So, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, hey, could somebody bring me a little sponge that's got water? Because I'm gonna I'm gonna go through some notes today. I think. Hmm. Uh, okay. Before we get started, Teresa. Two things for you. I was going to whisper it in your ear, and I thought maybe that wouldn't be appropriate. Um, <laughs> I try to behave myself. I've been getting so rebuked about not having G services, having PG services, and stuff like that. I'm working very hard on having general audience services. At one point in time, thank you. I would really like to have a special night, like a Thursday night or a Friday night or what night, where only adults come and we can have, and everybody puts their big boy pants on and big girl pants on, and I can preach for an hour, and no one's going to say anything bad. Um, two things. One is the anointing on your life, you need to really make sure that you protect that anointing. Okay? Very important. Uh, the second thing is, I believe God is bringing newfound freedom to you, but we have freedom to do and freedom not to do. This is a freedom not to do. So, there you go. Take it and put it on the shelf. All right, so we're going to start today a, um, a new uh, series. And because I talked about during the last series, those three things, three points and, po and facts that are critical to your walk. One is that we walk by faith. We walk in love. And, and both of those, walking, seriously walking by faith is challenging calling things that are not as though they are. Hmm. Challenging. Walking in love, super challenging. Super challenging. But we're called to do that. That is our life. We walk by faith. We walk in love. And the critical one to all of it, holding it together, is that you need to walk led by the Holy Spirit. And so, we're going to be talking about those three things. And I said, I think, last week that I'd start with being led by the Holy Spirit, part one. So, before I get into that, though, I want to have a prelude. And I, I re actually wrote notes down for the prelude. And I'm going to try my best to follow them. A prerequisite to being led by the Spirit of God is to be a mature, stable believer. Now, having said that, when you get saved, the door opens for you to be led by the Holy Spirit. You can. Boy, that's a great response. <laughs> All right. Let me back up. Now, I know that we're, there's not very many people here, all right? And I know that last announcement shook up people. That's fine. We're going to, we're all over the next, we're, we'll continue to get back on track. But it's critical that you help me preach. Amen. It really is. But particularly where I'm at personally. You know, I would always practice preaching uh, at home before I preach. And it doesn't matter what I preached yesterday. It's never the same on Sunday. It doesn't do any... I sit there, I go, why am I practicing? What good does it do me? God just says, just keep it going. Keep it going. Okay, okay. But you have to be mature. 
not to be led by the Spirit necessarily. If you just make a choice, I'm going to acknowledge and be led by the Spirit every day of my life, no matter what. And all these other distractions are just plain not going to bother me because I'm awesome. If that's you, praise the Lord. But if you're a normal person and you got to renew your mind and you got to get your heart still right, you just remember spirit man got born again, flesh man is alive and well and feeling good. And it's a battle. It's a battle. So we got to grow up. So let's turn to the book of Hebrews. If you want to grow up, Hebrews is a good book to grow up in. Isaiah, a good book. Romans, oh my word. It'll grow you up and knock you down. Hebrews, oh boy. So when I was preaching this message, uh, yesterday, which is not the message, because this is the prelude to the message, right? I had to go back, I think I was in Galatians, I had to go back to the very beginning, all the way back to Genesis again. And I go, this is not happening. I can't get it done if I keep doing that. But isn't that what you find when you're reading the, the Bible? When, particularly when you, we see a therefore, oh man, I can't just let that lie. I got to see why it's there for. What is it there for? And I have to go back. But let's just take it easy. And let's just skip to a scripture. Oh, uh, the second thing is, you help me preach, and I'll guarantee it, it'll be an anointed message. Okay. The second thing is, though, you help remind me where I'm going. Is, we got a deal? Okay. Because every time I crack this book, I, I get distracted. Oh, man, that's good. Oh, man, that's good. Oh, man, that good. You know where that takes you? That takes you over here. Oh, and then we could read that. And then we could have fun there. Okay. So just for fun, because this one word caught my eye. It has nothing to do with the message. Verse 12, chapter 6, verse 12, Hebrews. We do not want you to become lazy. That's my Father's Day message to you, men. Don't be lazy. Amen. Don't be lazy when it comes to, you know, you know what my goal is on my Father's Day, and I, I always share this with you guys. I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy steaks for all the dads in my family and all the kids, which is my girls and my son. He's, not a, he's the only one that's not married yet. Um, he's the youngest. But one day he's going to be a dad, and I'm going to do the same thing. Tonight, son, you don't get a steak. No, just joking. <laughs> You'll get a steak. My goal, my goal on Father's Day is to bless my kids and be a good example to my sons-in-laws. Now, having said that, do I fail at that goal a lot? Yeah, I do. I, I just fail because I want to I do and then sometimes I just, it's just not working and then I get tired and I go take a nap and, you know, it's done. It's over with. But the intent, <laughs> which does you no good whatsoever, be an example. I'm going to leave here, buy some steaks. I'm going to do my best to cook them and then serve them. Why? Because it's Father's Day. And that's what my dad did for me on Father's Day. And I'm going to forever do that. He didn't have us get together so we can give him presents and bless him. He served us. Amen. I thought, Amen. that's a dad. Yeah. Let's be servants. Amen. I mean, you know what? It's the same thing with my girls and, and Johnson too. Um, on my birthday and uh, Father's Day, they, they don't ever give me uh, no. They, they hand me notes but they don't give them to me for, for me to read at that time. Matter of fact, they will just walk by and they'll throw it like that. <laughs> and, and I'll pretend I didn't see it and I'll just tuck it away for later. 
And they would do that so because if I see it and I look at it, I'll start crying. You know. And if I were to open it up, I start crying. Sometimes I don't open them and read them for days. I just have them sitting there. You know, and then one day when I'm feeling strong, and then I open up, I start crying. It just doesn't work. You know, it's the same thing every year. But how fun is that? People, and I, I was saying this in the prayer room, life is wonderful. Life is great. It's so foolish. It is so foolish to not take the high road and enjoy this life. And how we let so many petty things just bother us. Just don't do it. Don't do, don't do it. And if you've made a mistake and you've fallen fat on your face, just say, Lord, forgive me, and then forget it. And then move forward. Oh, let's grow up. So, we do not want you to become lazy, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Wow. That is one of those things that that was worth it for you, combing your hair and dressing up and coming out that one scripture. You can go home now. That is it. Don't become lazy. And we have a tendency to do that. Oh, man, I've been serving God for 40 years. Cut me some slack. Oh, man. This is like when I was praying for the fathers today. And God spoke very clear. Came out of Michelle's mouth. We were getting out of bed this morning. God is telling us that the fathers have done good. You have been good fathers. You know how I am in Father's Day. I think most fathers are such wimps. Here I go. We're going into PG territory. Rewind it. Don't go there. Don't go there. Oh, I'm not here to make you feel good. Seriously, there's so many people just need a swift kick in the rear. Michelle's looking at me. Michelle made a confession. She says, you know, you make me nervous every Sunday. <laughs> and I find out I make other people in the congregation nervous too. I go, oh boy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on cooling the jets. We don't, do not want you to become lazy. So there's a possibility, dads, that you can become lazy. But to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit and have been You have mentors and people out there that are good examples in your life. They have fought the fight. They continue to fight the fight. Those are the ones you want to keep your eyes on. They've been married to the same person. They have that. They're committed. They're doing their things. They're doing it right. I know every time I say something like that, every... Family has been touched by divorce people. Okay? My parents were divorced. My brother was divorced. My sister was divorced. I mean, it is. Michelle and I have been together since we were kids. And we're staying together. Never going to get a divorce. Because we're committed. I don't care if you've been divorced or how many times you've been divorced. Today is the day of salvation. We put that behind and we go forward, pure and simple. It's all done. Let's go forward. Let's keep our eyes on those people, though. Filled with the Holy Ghost can be your mentors. All right. So one person came to me one time. Now, you know, you guys know that I quit doing marriage counseling. What a waste of time. I mean, <laughs> she many Christmas. If you've gone to marriage counseling and had success, praise the Lord. Like I said, you're awesome. Okay? Most people, they just go to vent or to try to get someone to be on their side. And if you're not on their side, they close everything off. Anywho. But I mean, there is good stuff. But the bottom line is this. Every good counselor is going to point you to the Word of God. You hear that? Every good counselor will point you to the Word of God. So let's save ourselves a bunch of time. Get in the Word of God. You'll be fine. All right. Now, I know it's not all that easy. Why isn't it so? Why isn't it that easy? I'll tell you why. Because somebody has been feeding flesh man instead of spirit man. If you feed spirit man, it's going to be fine. If you're feeding them both, 
it doesn't work. Flesh man is strong. Eventually, he'll knock the lights out of spirit man. Quit going to church. Quit reading the Bible. Quit. And you know what else happens during those times? You feel like you're good. That's deception. It's a lie. It's the devil telling you that. It continues to get worse. First chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, this is what I got a problem with. There's the therefore. We're going to have to wait. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ. I can't even imagine an elementary teaching about Christ. That's true. I mean, Paul, this guy, he's awesome. And he's amazing. But what he's saying is, come on, some of this stuff is foundational. In other words, we're going to be building. Amen. We're building a life here. It's just like I said, we're going to be building the foundation of faith. We thought we should have already done that, but I'm going to be preaching on it. A foundation of love, we've already done that. I'm going to be preaching on it, but we still have to do it. And being led by the Holy Spirit of God, is that so hard? Hi, hi, the Holy Spirit's in you. Now listen, and that seems to be a problem. Elementary things. Let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ. It's hard to do that. It's seriously hard to do. So many of us are still stumbling over the elementary things. It's time for us to grow up. Let's go forward. Teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity. That's what God wants to do. Take us forward to maturity. Not doing what? Not laying again the foundation of repentance from the acts that lead to death. Listen, we are saved by grace. It's done. We don't need to have a conversation about it anymore. When you get saved, you're saved by grace. Through faith, you have to believe it. Now, if you decide not to believe, that's fine. But once you get saved, the package, the benefit package is open to you. All of it. What is that? Psalms 103. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Verse 2. Oh, yeah. What's the benefits? Well, we, all the things that we learned and we studied in, in Galatians. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. We are under the Abrahamic covenant. And the blessings, the blessing, just like the gospel, is right there for you. You know, I never got to, oh boy, oh boy. I never got to get to this part. But I had said that when we were going through chapter 3 in Galatians, and, and I am not an expository person. To me, preaching expositorially is easy. And a lot of people do that, and, and you can make it good and fun. But I found, for myself personally, I found out the anointing is to be just led, and God will lead you. He will lead you, and he'll show you and give you the scriptures. But you have to have them inside. You, you got to have had something put back in there for the Holy Spirit to bring it back to your remembrance. So the, you have had to have put the scriptures in here. But he talks about the good news in the first three chapters of Galatians. I think he mentions it 12 times. Good news, the gospel. But chapters 1 and chapter 2 have a whole different bent because chapter 3 starts out with, oh, you foolish Galatians. What? He's talking about people that are serving God. Oh, you foolish people. You go back to chapter 1 and it tells you. He says, I preach to you the gospel, the good news. I didn't get it from man. I got it handed right from the source. The Holy Spirit of God gave it to him. There's only one gospel. There's only one true gospel. It is the gospel. And he says that you're doing now a different gospel. What I realized is there's all sorts of different gospels. 
You want to know the heart of the gospel. Now, we know it's what Jesus did on the cross. That's the good news. It's the redemption. That's the good news for our sins that we're not under. It gets complicated. We're not under the law anymore. We are washed, cleansed in the blood. It's done. Now, that becomes a big deal if you really believe. Because that whole law thing is now over with. The blessings and the curses on the curses, they should be done for you because you've been redeemed and your life should be living under the blessing. Those are facts in the scripture. But what is the gospel? It's good news. You can deliver the gospel all day long. To the saved person, is it ending just with salvation? There's no good news after salvation? I mean, good news, salvation is the best good news, isn't it? But is there any good news after that? Well, somebody was sharing with telling me about Matthew. Turn to, turn to Matthew 9. Let's see if we can... Matthew 9... Ah, verse 35. Um, yeah, this is where the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. Jesus went through all the towns and villages. And what did he do? Teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming, declaring, that's preaching, the good news. He's preaching the good news. Now, we haven't got saved yet, but he's preaching the good news. He's telling everybody about it because the whole combination comes in Galatians chapter 3, verse 14. Because of the Holy Spirit, the promised Holy Spirit comes and resides now inside you. Now say thank you, Jesus, somebody. Say thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit is inside of me. Man, you, why aren't you happy? One person is happy. The Holy Spirit resides in you. Wow. You are alive. Thank you, Lord. Some people need revival. Some people need a resurrection. <laughs> Jesus went through all the towns and all the villages, teaching in their synagogue, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. Here's the good news, right? Of the kingdom. What's he telling you about the kingdom? What he's telling you about the kingdom is the Holy Spirit's coming. The Holy Spirit's coming. There's going to be kingdom living. And it has come. And that's why we can live in kingdom living now. Amen. The Holy Spirit sealed it for us. All those things that were done. And now it shouldn't be that the battle is on. But the battle seems to be on. It should only be against the enemy. But it seems to be against the flesh. Listen. You permeate yourself with the Word of God, worship, and prayer, and fellowship with good people. People that love you, that care about you. Spirit man's going to grow. Spirit man's going to get healthy. Spirit man's going to get strong. And flesh man is going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. It all depends upon who you're feeding today. I mean, so, well, I got saved 40 years ago. I got a lot of stuff under the bridge. You know what I'm saying? Every day, I have a choice to make. I can serve God. Or I can serve the flesh. You know why? Because that, the, the flesh man, he knocks on that door every day. When are you going to get tired of this? Where are we at? You know what? Oh, wow. We don't have enough time, so let's just keep shifting gears, okay? Let's just shift another gear. Shall we? Sure. 
go to Revelations. You follow me as I follow Christ. 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1. You just make sure I keep falling, because I'm going to fall. You follow. You're okay. I can tell you, you're going to be okay. Familiar scripture, isn't it? Verse 20. Here I am. Who's there? Knock, knock. Who's there? Revelation 3. Here I am. Who's there? 20. 320. Is everybody there? Here I am. I stand at the door. And I knock. I stand at the door and I knock. Does anybody think that's funny? Strange? Weird. This is the seriousness about this. Let's read the whole thing first and then let's go back. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and we're going to eat together and we're going to drink together. We're going to do that together. Verse 21. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Wow. Verse 22. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Let me, for fun, before we go on, let me read that to you in the Passion. I hope you like having these different versions. I hope you're not adverse to these different versions because you'll be a sad and remorse person if you are. <laughs> Did I just make a bad confession over some people? Yeah. <laughs> Revelation. This has got such tiny pages and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. This guy believes in healing for everybody's eyes before they read it. <laughs> Verse 20. Behold, I'm standing at the door. I'm knocking. If your heart, well, of course, the door is your heart. Has to be your heart. That's what I like about this version. This guy cuts it. All the other preachers, they'll read it out of a different version, and then they'll go, and what it really means is the heart. Why didn't you just read this to begin with? It'll save us some time. <laughs> I'm standing at the door knocking. If your heart is open to hear my voice, if... Don't you hate that if? I'm not liking that if. Because that gives choice again. Every time, the poor Calvinists, every time an if is in the scripture, the Calvinists are blown out. It's the saddest thing in the world. So now they're crossing out all the ifs. No, I don't know what they're doing. I pay no, I'm just, pay no attention to me. If your heart is open to hear my voice and you open the door within, I will come in to you and feast with you and you will feast with me. Amen. We're going to eat. We're going to sit down and we're going to have food together. We're going to eat and drink. You know, on Sundays, the kids come over and... Uh, we all, right now, we all have hamburgers and sometimes uh, corn and sometimes potato salad and stuff like that. We're all eating the same food. We're all drinking the same drinks. Usually water, some people have Hansons. We're all doing the same stuff and we're fellowshipping. Now Jesus says that if you open the door, I'll come in and you and I are going to eat together. Can you imagine eating at his table? The same thing that he's eating, I'm eating. The same thing that he's been drinking, I'm going to be drinking. Oh, and he says my, the kind that he drinks is everlasting. You'll never thirst again. You'll never be hungry again. Oh, that's the table to be at. What's the problem with this scripture? It seems pretty nice. 
Well, didn't you, didn't you think about that for a minute? Why is this so unusual? Because Jesus is standing at the door of your heart and he's knocking. Now, don't you believe that God wants everyone to be saved? Yes. Who on earth thinks that God doesn't want everyone to be saved as a knucklehead? But not everyone is going to be saved. Why? Because he's knocking. God, while he's standing there, he could blow the door up. He could walk through the door. He could have you fly up in the air and land like Wile E. Coyote on your head on the other side of the door. God can do all those things. He walked through walls. He did all that right afterwards, didn't he? When he, after the resurrection. Yeah, he's God. But what does he do? He's standing out there instead, knocking on the door of your heart, waiting for you. Now, what really disturbed me about this? If you have ears to hear, are you listening? He's knocking. Problem? Who else is knocking on that door? Oh boy. Oh boy, there's a whole lot of things knocking on that door. Yeah. Hey, but that other person? That other person? Oh no. That other person's not a gentleman. You remember we were reading Ephesians 4 27? Remember what that scripture says? Anybody? Hmm? Somebody guess. Anybody guess? Who devil, devil a photo? Who said that? A plus. Oh. <laughs> That's my number one daughter. I have five. She goes by number one. Yeah. Good job. What would you say? Yeah. What would you say? Don't give the devil a foothold. You ever think about what that means? Don't give the devil a foothold. Literally. If you could imagine two sumo wrestlers, this is what they do. They, I don't know, they're throwing powder or something or rice. <laughs> Watch my feet. You see, they plant their feet. Can you imagine that? Two 600 pounders looking at each other three feet apart? I mean, something's going to give, right? <laughs> but when they hit, it's a smash. Why? Well, they're planting their feet. They got their body and they got it in position. When the door of your heart gets cracked open to the wrong thing, that foot goes right in there. That foot goes in there. And you realize now, who it, and you try to close the door. And that foot is in the way. And the enemy just got a foot hold. You ever done that to somebody? You try to get in, you stick your foot in the door, they're not closing the door. That's a scary scripture. Do not let the enemy get a foothold anywhere. Period. Because oh, when he does, it's hard to get it out. I've seen lives just ruined. Because one day they just cracked that door open just a tad. People, it's not worth it. Just remember, this is a short span of time. I decided a long time ago, I can behave myself for the rest of my life. Why? Because i got eternity. I'll get a little wild in eternity. <laughs> when things are not, there's not near as many consequences in eternity. I can probably drive a motorcycle as fast as I want in eternity. If it all works out according to my plan. <laughs> we shall see. But what do people do? They open that door. How do you open the door? 
Oh, there's lots of ways. Now, I, I, now I'm going to share something. Um, uh, that's going to be, I, I need you to just get it into your spirit, okay? And because I can't go and give you a particular scripture right this second. It would take a bunch of scriptures that would add up to it, okay? But I believe that you are Christians that are either mature or are maturing, when it comes to the mercy and grace of God, it is so powerful and so wonderful. Oh boy. Oh, we could go to the scriptures in Romans and take care of that right now, couldn't we? Let's not, though. Let's go there somewhere in a minute, maybe. Uh, but the mercy and grace is, has such depth, the, the most depth, Depth of all things with depth. Love is deep, isn't it? Joy is deep. You know, all these so many deep things. But some things just go deeper. Mercy and grace is one of them. Supersedes so many things. Now, when you make a boo-boo. If you've been naughty, and I mean really naughty, you've done numero uno naughty, and you live with that, you're missing something in regards to mercy and grace. Just like Jesus is How's that scripture go in Hebrews? That's on the uh, Hebrews, I think it's 13, 8 or 8, 13. Four square people. Same yesterday, today, and forever. You see that mercy and grace and that love of God? Same yesterday, the same today, and forever. If you've got, if you were forgiven... When you ask Christ into your life, you are forgiven. It's done. I mean, Paul had the sense when he says in, I can't remember, Romans 5, 6, 7, somewhere. So what do we do? And we'll read these down the road, but we're, we're just doing foundation right now. This is just foundation. But he's trying to teach the, the Romans about grace and he's saying that it, no matter how you sin grace is there to cover it do, do, do you get that part of what he's saying yes. and he comes underneath that and he says but listen don't just go sinning because you can and because there's enough grace don't do that why why not do that well here's why because you take yourself not away from salvation. You would have to not believe to do that. But you remove yourself from the blessing of God. And you don't want to do that. Remember, we talked about this. Blessing and curses are real. And a whole lot of people integrate curses in their, in their life all the time and think it's normal. It's not. He's the same yesterday, today, forever. That mercy and grace, when you received him, it started yesterday, it's good for today, and it is good forever. Amen. You make a boo-boo, you do something naughty, and it is like you're the baddest person in town. And you go, wait a minute. I'm saved. Lord, I messed up. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Do you know what he does? Seriously. He goes, huh? 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 Why can't we get that into our spirits? 
He's not thinking about it anymore. It ended 2,000 years ago. You could take it even further back if you really wanted to. But we think, we seem that we've got to be so perfect and, and we've got to be, I have to think perfectly all the time. No. It's better when you do. I was, uh, I was building a case in amongst our theologians. We were, that's my family. <laughs> I have to run everything by them before I preach because otherwise I go, you can't say that. You can't do that. But I was sitting there thinking, I got them good. I said, well, let's see. I had a dream last night that I can't even tell anyone about. Not, not last night. I'm, this is a hypothetical. It was actually a couple weeks ago. And I go, it wasn't sin. How can you say what you, you told me what you did? That was sin. No, 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 no. No, it was in a dream. Of what, now I have to control my dreams too? Well, John, if you'll put this into your head before you go to sleep and this into your head, your dreams will be perfect. Where planet do you live on? I know how this whole thing works. I know how the enemy works. He loves just to mess with your mind. But what travels through your mind, if you don't let it get to your heart, we're good. Do you understand that? Yeah. It's the mind that influences this heart. Amen. If you're opening up that door to bad things, you're in trouble. Otherwise, the poor person who just got saved, who needs to renew their mind. Oh, they're going to be such sinners. And then the guilt and the shame. We need to grow up. Guilt and shame is from the devil, Amen. period. Amen. Mercy and grace is from our loving Father. Amen. You can live under either one. Choose for yourself today where you want to live. Oh, my, my, my. <laughs> if anyone hears my voice and opens the door. You know we're going to... Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. You know, it's, going to church is fun. Do you guys have as much fun as I do? Yeah. I hope so, because it's already, church is already over. <laughs> and I'm looking going, wow, isn't this fun? We don't even get, we just get revved up. Just get revved up. Just be mindful of this. People, in life, don't come to church to get pumped up. Stay pumped up. And you stay pumped up. I mean, think about this now. We know that the, the virus stuff has slowed a whole, and messed up a whole lot of things, and we're all still recovering uh, from that, and... Everyone's regrouping and the churches are regrouping and all that. But we've always, we always have our chapter that we read. And then we read in the Jesus handbook. We have five pages that we go through a, a page a day. If you'll just keep those things going, you will stay solid. That's all you got to do. Just keep the scriptures going. Keep the devotion going. And you will stay solid. It's the Word of God that keeps you right. Dan's on the front row and Susan's with him. Not because of Dan, because of Susan. Going, that's what we do, John. And they're solid. And he's stoked and I'm stoked for them. And it's exciting to see. Because they're doing it. They're not talking about it. Not missing it. They're actually doing it. You know what happens when you do that? Maturity, growth, stability. I mean, stability is something that we need nowadays. Amen. I mean, you really do. It's a wild world out there. It's a lot wilder now than it ever was, I'll tell you that. 
good grief, I thought our time was wild, which it was. <laughs> but this is, jeez, much more wild. All right, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close up today. And I'm just going to leave you with this one thing. And if, if, you, do, if you have time this next week, um, Lord willing, read the book of Romans. Read chapter 5, chapter 6. Um, you know what? Just read 7 and 8 also. Just go through those and let's just pour over those scriptures because if, if everything goes well, um, we're going to get into chapter 6. But please be mindful of this. The enemy would love to keep you under the guilt and shame. Conviction comes from the Holy Spirit of God. You know, I've told you guys many times, you guys know, in my, I'm a very transparent person, too transparent. I guess that's what people say. Um, what they say? Um, too much information. John always gives too much information. Yeah, because I really, I got nothing to hide. Whatever, you know. Okay, all right. Skip that. You know, you know the, the, when the, the, Lord, the Lord can speak to you anytime, right? And you want to be led by the Holy Spirit. You know, in, in the past, I could never get away with anything. Not from Michelle. Michelle was um, good, good about whatever. But I couldn't get away from God once I got saved. I mean, I couldn't get away. I couldn't sneak anything. I couldn't do anything. Don't get me wrong, I did some things. But I did them feeling the Holy Spirit going, no, no, no. And I'm going, yes, just for a minute, please. No, no, come on, come on. Hurry, John, hurry. No. When you serve God, the conviction of the Holy Spirit is a marvelous and wonderful thing. Amen. It'll guide you. It'll steer you. But that other, you've got to wash and get rid of the guilt and the shame the condemnation, whatever it is, be done with it. Put an end to it and never go back to it. God has called us to be free. I love in Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, it says to be free, to be freer. To be free. To sin? No. To enjoy life. As a believer, serving Him, bringing glory to Him. What Amen. a good life. Amen. Give the Lord a praise, everybody. <laughs> Worship team, come back up. We're going to finish. Sorry, I'm just so long-winded. Every head bowed just for a moment, please. I'm looking around, and I believe everybody's saved, but just in case there's somebody out there on the live stream that may not be saved or or has gotten off track. This is the invitation, people. The Holy Spirit is alive and well and real. And He is the one that draws. And if you just feel it, just a tug on that heart of yours, don't close it off. If you hear Him knocking, He's saying, let me in, let me in. Open that heart. Open that door on, on your heart today. If you've never received Jesus, say, you know what, I need to receive you. If you've gotten yourself on track, off track, get on track today. If that sits, fits either, either category fits you, just slip your hand up. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. I'm just we're going to say a prayer. I got off track. I need to get back on track. Just slip your hand up. I've never received Jesus, and I want to receive him today. All right, amen. I'm looking around, and everybody is good. I believe that. But for out in the live stream, let's just pray this prayer together. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to wash me, cleanse me, white as snow. And I thank you for that. And Jesus, I'm going to serve you now all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a praise, everybody. Thank you.